isolate the set. You need to isolate the set first. Right? So my suggestion here will be take this whole term, the set, to the right hand side. I think let me let me close some offs. Isolate it. If you do that, you will get x plus 3 equal to 2 square root of 5 minus x. That, that's how I would suggest that you do it. So you isolate the set first. Then the next thing now is to remove the radical sign or the square root sign. That's the next step. Okay? But be aware that. Outside the radical sign, there is this 2 here. So when you square, we are aware that the square will also affect the 2 separately. So you square there on the right hand side, also square on the left hand side. Please, you don't square the x on its own, the 3 on its own. Be aware that x plus 3 is one number. It's one number. It's just that we don't know the value of what? Of x, but this is one number, so you can't square the x and you square the 3 separately. Because I have seen this from my experience over the years, they have to do this x squared plus 3 squared. This is wrong, okay? You square the binomial term That's, that is x plus 3, you square it, all right? And then from here, you get you use foil, okay? Use foil. Okay, let me take you back to the basics. So you square, so this is the same as x plus 3 times x plus 3. On the right hand side now, this 2 affects the 2 outside the square. So you end up with 2 squared times 5 minus x. The square will go that way. Then you have x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9 equal to 4 times 5 minus x. Then obviously, because of this square here, that tells you that you have to create a quadratic equation. Okay, it's 5 marks. So you have to show every step in order for you to get full marks. So this will become x squared plus 6x plus 9 equal to 20 minus when you take those two terms on the right and left, you get x squared plus 10x minus, minus 11. Okay, once we get to this standard form, remember, you have to simplify, you have to get the standard form because normally the standard form is allocated a mark. So you start with the squaring, right? Also, the transposing of this set here, it may be allocated the mark, taking it to the right hand side. Then, the squaring of, of on both sides. So the simplification is very basic, that, that's grade 9. The standard form, where it will be allocated the mark. Then, factorizing this is grade 9. Okay? So, this will be x plus 11 times x minus 1. Okay. Then you get two solutions. So the first solution will have x equal to minus 11, the other will be x equal to 1. Okay? Now you are expected, because this is a third equation, you have to test or check that both answers are correct or they are invalid. Okay? You have to check the validity of those two answers. Whenever you've got a third equation, you have to check the validity. You don't stop it. Otherwise, you may lose two marks if you stop it. You may lose two marks. So, let's do a quick check. Normally, this check you will do. You can do it mentally. So, let's start with minus 11. If I put minus 11 here, I'll get minus 11 plus 3, and that should give me minus 9, isn't it? So, I'll get minus 9. Then, if I put minus 11 inside the square root, you get 5 plus 11, which you can do at 6. Where? Minus 11 plus 16. Oh, it's minus 8. Sorry. Alright, so 5 minus, 
Find my minus minus 11 gives you a 16 inside the square root. So the square root of 16, you take the what? Positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2. That will give you minus 11. So you get minus 16 on the left and the 0 on the right. So in that case, is minus 11 valid or not? So this one will be written. And let's test the 1. You put 1 here, 1 plus 3 will give you a 4. Put 1 there, 5 minus 1 will give you a 4. The square root of 4 is a positive 2. 2 times negative 2 will give you a negative 2. So 4 minus 4 will give you a 0. So that's the solution. So here, you can just write, therefore, x is equal to what? 1. But you need to indicate that the x equal to minus 11 is not a valid solution. So sometimes the a mark can be allocated for writing that the, the other value is invalid. So you have to indicate either you can write it, you can write it next to the minus 11, not applicable, or you can say x is not equal to what? So minus 11. You can also write it like this. But the final answer will be positive 1. Are you following that? Now this question, if you are well prepared, I can tell you that you can do it within one minute. If you are well prepared, you know what to do. Because on Friday, when you get questions, it's no, it's, it's no longer time for you to start thinking a lot. It should become natural now. When you see a said equation, you know what to do. You don't have to take too much time thinking, how can I do this? No. That time is gone. All right? Okay, then... Your simultaneous equation. Now, this always comes. So be ready to solve a simultaneous equation. Sometimes they can bring knowledge of exponents, like in this case. So you have to apply a knowledge of exponents in the first equation first. Then you create your two equations, one which is linear, the other one quadratic in two variables. Okay? So let's deal with this equation first. We need to simplify that so that we can get a linear equation. So the first thing, take the minus 2 to the power of y plus 2 to the right. So we get 2 to the power of x will be equal to 2 to the power of y plus 2 equal to 0. x plus 0 to the right. Then the base is the same. Therefore, the exponents are equal. So your first mark will be here. This is where the first mark will be. Okay? Knowing that x is equal to y plus 2. That's where you get your first mark. It's six marks, remember. Normally, a simultaneous equation is five marks, six marks. That's the most common marks for simultaneous equation. Five marks, six. Five, six. You check the first papers. Five, six, five, six. Right? Which is quite a lot. Right? So, and it's also easy to get those full marks. Mm. Once you get here, you can call this one here to equation one. Obviously, this equation here is going to be maybe equation two. Now, when you are solving a simultaneous equation, always make x or y the subject in the linear equation. Okay? If the coefficient of x or y in the linear, okay, is not a one for both x and y, then it means you have to be ready to work with fractions. Okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? Let's say, for example, the coefficient of this x was a 2, the coefficient of the y was a 3. It means you have to make either of x the subject or y the subject. In that case, you create a what? An equation which has got fractions. So be ready for that. Right? Then you can also have a case where. One of the two, that is either x or y, has got a coefficient which is more than one. In that case, make y the subject if the coefficient is one, or make x the subject if the coefficient is what? Is one. Don't try to work with fractions unless there is no choice. Is that clear to everyone? Unless there is no choice. You don't know what type of equation they will bring for simultaneous, but those are the cases that you can have. The easiest case is when both of them the coefficient which is equal to what? To 1. That's the easiest thing. Alright? So here, this was easy. So all I have to do is substitute into the 
quadratic in two variables. But I got my x as the subject. So where there is x there, I'll put what? y plus 2. This is very easy. So easy. It's so easy to have kind where if you really understand it, you will no longer need to do it again. Do you understand what, what I mean? It's so easy. So, yes? So, why do you make a y and plus That's fine. No, that's also fine. Now, that solution will also be provided. So, then the memo will accommodate both cases where you make x the subject or you make y the subject. But for this case here, there's no need to make y the subject. Because x is already the what? The subject. Okay, so let's substitute that. You get y plus 2 squared plus 2 times, okay, here I'm going to write this 2y, right, then times y plus 2. You're following that? Because we have got 2xy. So I started by writing 2y first, then I substitute the value of x. You can do this because of multiplication. Or you can take this y to the other side. It's still the same thing. Right? Plus y squared equal to 36. Now, already it should become natural to you that you have to create a quadratic equation. This is the clue that you have to create a quadratic equation. That's why you have to be a master of solving quadratic equations. You have to be a master of solving quadratic equations. Those quadratic equations pop up in many topics in both paper one and paper two. So you have to be a master of solving quadratic equations. Alright, so here use FOIL. Yes? So why don't you get 2xy minus 2y? Alright. You see these two? You see these two? The, the, the two xy. It's all, you can also write this 2yx. Because of multiplication. Therefore, I started with the 2y, then I multiplied it by what? By x. But you can also write 2, then you open the bracket y plus 2, then you put the y on the other side. Yeah, it's still the same. Yeah. Right? Then, obviously, please, here, yeah, don't be tempted to say this is y squared plus 2 squared. Please. I'm telling you, that's a very common mistake. That's a very, very common. And some learners will do it in the final paper. Okay, so this is y plus 2 times y plus 2. If you can do it mentally, simplify this and get a trinomial, that's also fine. Right? So this will be plus, now I'm going to multiply here with 2y squared plus 4y plus y squared equals 36. By simplifying this, you get y squared plus 4y plus 4 plus 2y squared. Can we make this a 3y squared plus 5 plus 2 plus 4y equals 36? Then you get 4y squared. Okay, that would be 8y. Then you take the 36 to the left, you get minus 32 equals 3. Okay, so in terms of mark allocation, right, you get a mark here. There is a possibility that, okay, this would be the best option. Second mark is for substituting that into the quadratic in two variables. The fourth mark would be the standard form of the quadratic equation. Right, then I would encourage you here to check out the common factor. If you don't want that, you can use the quadratic equation to solve it. Okay? Remember, there are three methods that you can use to solve the quadratic equation, excluding the calculator. You have factorization, the quadratic formula, completing the square. Now, among the three, the best method is to use the quadratic formula. But if you are very good at factorizing, then you can also do that. But the quadratic formula is the best. So, here, there's a common factor which is a 4. And that would be 16. Sorry, 15 rather than 16. That would be 8. So that would be minus 8. Two thousand three. So what this means is my new equation, which is simplified, is y squared plus 
2y minus h to the power of 0. Okay, now that's a great nine quadratic equation. Okay, so this will be y plus 4 times y minus 2 to the power of 0. You get y plus minus 4 for y plus the power of 2. Okay, so we have first <coughs> uh, the point mark with the, the factors. Either the factors, or if you use the quadratic formula, you get a mark for using the quadratic formula. So four marks. Then the fifth mark, the two y values. You have to get the two y values correct for you, both of them correct, for you to get the, the mark. If one is not correct, you won't get the, the mark. But you get CA marks for the values of x now, provided you don't make any silly mistake. So if I want to find x, so x will be equal to, if I start with minus 4, that will be plus 2. I'll get negative 2. Okay? When y is positive 2, I'll get 2 plus 2, and then you get positive 2. Right? Please, there is no mark allocated if you write your answers as order first. Okay, so it's a 4. Mine is exactly. So for 2 plus 2. Okay. Are you following? Huh? So you get the final mark is allocated for the x part. Okay. This is how the question is, is marked. Okay? So please, in the next few days, keep it from today, you have to solve a simul at least one, solve one simultaneous a day from now until you, you uh, until you write on Friday. Okay? Time flies. Friday you are writing by the day. Okay? Any question? Right. Then the, this question here it requires application now of concepts on algebra equations mainly those two. And generally, because this is a grade 11 question, by the way, this is not grade 12. Remember, question 1 is not grade 12. Be aware of that. Question 1 is grade 11. And there's got some grade 10 as well, and some grade 9. Because like this question, the first question, this one, 1.1.1, 1. 1. 1. 1, that's a grade 9 question. Huh? It's not grade 10. It's grade 9. Yeah. Grade nine. Yes, it's grade nine. Uh -uh. You were taught how to solve quadratic equations for the first time in grade nine. Then they are repeated in grade ten, also in grade eleven, because they are important. All right, just to share with you, there is a reason why quadratic equations are taught in three grades. It's because they are so important. Grade nine, grade ten, grade eleven to prepare you for metric and beyond. Okay, so let's talk about this question. This question looks scary if you see it for the first time, but you just have to try your best to answer it. If you can't answer, a question like this should not stop you from getting good marks in the question. So out of the 24 marks, you can sacrifice this question. It won't stop you from passing. Don't waste time. Please be aware that for a final examination, it's a do or die situation. Your time management skills are extremely important. Okay? Also, the position where you put your calculator on your desk. If you are right handed, you can't put the calculator on your left. The calculator must go on the desk on your right. And just as a hint, the calculator must not be held in the hand. I've seen letters writing in the examination, they are holding the calculator in the hand and they are doing whatever they are doing. If you want to be quick, the calculator must be on the desk. All right, so 1.3. A square has sides x centimeters, okay, each. So what's the area? So for the, because of the first sentence, the area, you, you can call it S squared, side squared, isn't it? Or you can call it L squared, whichever you decide to write, or B squared. So this is the area. So you decide. Then, in terms of x, it will be equal to what? x squared. 
That's the area of the square. Remember, a square is with four equal sides. Now, if each side of the square is increased by four centimeters, the area is increased by 392. So initially, the area of the square is x squared. But then the length of each side is increased by what? By, by 4, which means the length of each side is now x plus 4. But the area now, the new area, okay, let me use a different color. The new area is going to increase from being x squared to x squared plus what? 392. The length of each side is going to change now. The length of each side is going to be x plus 4. So this question was so easy. So you have to create a what? An equation in terms of x. In that equation, the area is this. So x squared plus 392 will be equal to x plus 4 squared. So what is the value of the area? The area initially was x squared. When you increase the length of each side by Four, right? The area is increased by 392 square centimeters. Initially it was x squared. After the increase in the length, it becomes x squared plus 392, isn't it? Isn't that isn't that so? Yes, Jen. So why do we add the x squared? Because initially the area was x squared. Initially the area was x squared. Then it was increased by what? 392. What caused that? Each length was increased by what? By 4. Remember, the area of a square is still s squared. So where there is s, then you put x plus what? Plus 4. Where there is this a here, you put x squared plus 392, and you get this equation. All right, just as a hit, because you only have five minutes. You have five minutes for the interval. It's not in terms of hours, it's like five times 24 of 120 plus 24 of 144. We have less than 144 hours to find out approximately. So, at, at this stage, all right, at this stage, listen. At this stage, if you were to get a question like this in your paper on Friday, please don't waste time trying to, to do it. The, if, okay, just as a hint, if you look at a question and you can take more than one minute without getting an idea of how to do it, stop straight up. Stop. Move on. Move on. Four marks. Do you know that these four marks here can I be attached to those four marks? You can still get a distinction if it's, that's your A. You can still get your B if that's your A. You can still get a C if that's your A. Without answering that question. So what do you want to do? Do you want what? I haven't finished. I'm still talking. So let's carry on. Let's stop. Let's stop. So this is X squared. Plus 392 equal to. Now, this again use foil. Remember, this will be x plus 4 times x plus 4. So that will be x squared plus 392 equal to x squared plus 4x. Okay, allow me to just take you to the basics. Plus another 4x plus 16. So this will give us x squared plus 392 equal to x squared plus 8x right so now check this if I take the x squared to the left and or take this x squared to the right they cancel out isn't it so I'm, I'm going to have an equation which will be 8x is equal to 392 minus 16 392 minus 16 is 376 so so I'll end up with 8x equal to 
Are you following that then? Huh? Then Calculate x. But be aware that for question one, they, they, they are most likely to bring a higher order question. And usually it's around four marks somewhere. Three, four marks. If you can't figure it out, please let not it hinder you from doing well in the paper. Leave it. Okay. Four marks cannot stop a person from getting an A, or from getting a B, or from getting a C, or from getting a D. No, no. Okay. All right. So in terms of math allocation, in terms of math allocation, I'll give the first mark for creating that equation. Okay. Then, for simplifying, you can give the mark there. Right. Then, obviously, the answer. Well, I could probably give a mark for knowing the value of the area after the increase. I can also give a mark there. So I was examining how we allocate it to stay. Okay. First, writing the equation should not take you 10 seconds. The equation of asymptotes. So your two equations of your two asymptotes are x equal to what? x equal to 2 and then the horizontal asymptote is x to y equal to 3. So you should not take more than 5 seconds to write the equations of the asymptotes. Then the domain, how would you write the, the, the domain? So you start by saying x is an element of real numbers. But x is not equal to the value along the vertical asymptote. So, it is not equal to 2. Sometimes you can get a question asking to write the range. No, this is the best way of, of, of writing the range. Okay? So, that's the best way of writing the you have to exclude the two. The two is not right. That, that won't be correct. Please, just learn to write this. It's so, it's so simple. You, you, you just write this x an element of it. Then you look at your equation of your asymptote. If it's domain, you just put not equal to that. If it was range, can you pay attention? If it was range, you just say not equal to 3. So you put y is an element of of real numbers if it was range. Y is an element of real numbers, but Y is not equal to what? To the value along the horizontal asymptote. It's so easy. It's so, so easy. And there's no need to complicate it. Don't complicate it. X or Y can never be equal to the value on the asymptotes. That's it. Right? Then 6.3 now, you need to sketch the graph. Now, to sketch the graph, you need to find the x and y intercepts. Okay, so let's find the x and y intercepts. Right, so we are doing 6.3 now. So if I want to find the x and y intercepts, I have to calculate them. Okay, so let me start with the x intercept. For the x intercept, I have to substitute y equal to what? To 0. So put 0 here. Then you get 6 over x minus 2 plus 3. Now, to solve this equation, can you pay attention, please? Pay attention. To solve this equation, don't complicate it. It's so easy. Take the positive 3 to the left. So if you do that, you get negative 3 equal to 6 over x minus 2. The denominator there is the what? It's a 1. Then you cross multiply. You cross multiply. You will get minus 3x plus 6 is equal to 6. Then you get a grade 8 equation. This is the grade 8 equation. Then you get minus 3x equal to 0. So x will be what? It will be 0. 
which means our x intercept is going to be at the origin. Yeah, it's fine. You can put it in the cloud. Right? Then, the y intercept for f of x to power 2, just, you get marks for having No, you get the marks for sketching. There are no marks allocated for doing this work now. The marks are allocated on the graph. Okay, so you you can use a calculator like, like, like what the spoke is talking about. You can use a calculator. So that is if you know your calculator very well in terms of the equations. Right? So f of x is equal to 6. Six over x minus two plus three. Now we are putting x equal to zero, so you get zero minus two plus three. This will give you six over minus two plus three, and again you get minus three plus three, and you get zero. Okay, so both the x and y intercepts are equal to zero. What does that mean? It means it means our x intercepts, our x intercepts are both at the origin. So one of the two curves of the hyperbola will pass through the what? The origin. Now if you look at the numerator, it's positive. So when you sketch it, it must be in the first quadrant and the third part. Because the numerator is positive. Okay? So if I go to the next page, if I go to the next page, let me sketch it quickly. So I'm going to sketch the graph. Right. If I come back, my x intercepts are both 0, then my x intercepts are y plus 3, y plus 1. So this one can be 1, 2, maybe 3. You need a ruler here, this one. Minus 1, minus 2, maybe minus 3. Then 1, 2, 3. Then on the other side, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So first thing, you draw the asymptotes. When you're sketching a hyperbola, first thing is to draw the asymptotes. So the y equal to positive 2. So the x equal to positive 2. So that's the base of asymptote. The result of asymptote is y equal to negative 3. So this is y, so y equal to positive 3. That's x equal to 2. Now, there is a common point that can I have your attention? Can I have your attention? I'm going to talk about the importance of the point of intersection of the asymptotes in answering 6.4. Right? So this is the point of intersection of the asymptotes. It's very important when you want to find the equation of the line of symmetry. Remember, in your paper, the trial paper, there was a question on the line of symmetry. And I marked that, that question for the whole grade. Most learners in the grade could not get it right. Right? So this point of intersection here, what is the x value here? The what? It's a 2. Isn't it? The y value is what? 3. Your lines of symmetry, there are two of them. One is a negative gradient, the other with a positive gradient. They also pass through this point. So the point of intersection of the asymptotes is also the point of intersection of the line of symmetry. And that's important in answering question 6.1. Are you following what I just said? Okay, let me just add this word. You might get that. You might come back again. If I were to just sketch the line of symmetry, there will be probably like that. Okay? Please just bear with me. There are many for that. And I need to drop it. Okay. Uh, it's not perfect. I'll just like to make it perfect. Better now. Then the other line is going to go this way. That's also a line of symmetry. The one with the negative gradient. Are you following what I'm doing? This, this is a very common question. So, the one with the negative gradient, the general equation is y equals to minus x plus 6. 
One is the positive gradient y cross g, the x plus c. At this stage, don't worry about what c is, but you can get it by substituting the coordinate of this point. Are you following that? If you understand this, if you, this question comes on Friday, you, it will be a piece of cake for you. You substitute x equal to 2 and y equal to 3, then you get c. If they ask for the one with the positive gradient. If the one with the negative gradient, you put x equal to 2, then you put y equal to 3. Then you solve for c. That's how easy it is. Are you following? Right? So, let's sketch now. If I want to sketch this, already I know that my graph is supposed to be in the first quadrant and the third part. So for the first quadrant, you look like that. That's the first part. Remember, once you draw your asymptotes, the areas between the asymptotes will become your new quadrants. You understand what I mean? Right? Then for the second one, we have got an x intercept there. So when I sketch it, it will pass through that point. And then you're done. Are you following? Because our x intercept is at the origin. Okay? Right now, this is more interesting now. Remember, I'm, I'm, I'm going deeper because you're going to write the paper. For 6.4, R is talking about lines of what? Symmetry. That's why I, I, I drew them. Because for you to understand 6.4, you have to understand the concept of the lines of symmetry of a hyperbola. Alright? Now, let's go to 6.4. Then, but you're going to be of 6.3. Are you all okay then? Huh? Now, 6.4. Now, you have to understand the question. The question says the graph of f, which is that, is translated to g. Okay? Now, I want to ask you a question. Is g a hyperbola or not? Because if you don't get that part right, you won't be able to do the question. Is G a hyperbola or not? It is a hyperbola. Then the question says, describe, listen, describe the transformation in the form, okay, in this form here. If the axis of symmetry of G, remember, the lines of symmetry, they are also called the axis of symmetry. Remember that. Lines of symmetry are also called what? The axis of symmetry. If the lines of symmetry or x of symmetry of G, which is a hyperbola, you get by translating F. Remember, by translation, we are saying you move it up or you move it down, you move it to the left or you move it to the what? To the right. That's what translation means. So F was moved up or down, we don't know. Left or what? Or right. To get a new function G. The axis of symmetry of that new function g, they are y equal to x plus 3 and y equal to minus x plus 1. So the question is saying, write a rule of transformation from f to what? To g. So for this question here, it's, it's, it's slightly higher order. You have to use your knowledge of the axis of symmetry or the lines of symmetry. So if I go back here, this is F, remember. So F was translated to get what? G. Your reference point is this point here. That's your reference point. Because the asymptotes and the line of symmetry, they intersect at a common point. So if the graph moves, the asymptotes move. The X of symmetry also what? Move. By the same number of units. Are you following that? So, I'm sure you can agree with me that since we are given the equations of the lines of symmetry, we can just equate them to get the new coordinates of the point of intersection. Okay, if F is translated, do the coordinates of this point remain the same? No. So how do we get the coordinates of the new 
point after translation based on the information we have here. The only way is to equate the what? The axis of symmetry. Because the equations are given. And following that, so all we have to do is to say x plus 3 is equal to minus x plus 1. Why am I doing this? To determine the new x value after the translation. Okay? So this will give me 2x is equal to minus 2. So we get x equal to minus 1. Okay? So what this means is the x value, which was initially a 2, it is now what? Minus 1. So that translation, is it to the left or to the right? To the left. By how many units? We are moving from 2 to minus 1. How many units? Minus 1. Yes. Minus 1 to one more units. The x value is now minus. Right? Okay. The y value, we just substitute this x value here. Please, can you do me a favor, please, and pay attention? Be serious. Because the hyperbola will, will always come. You will never know. They might bring a question on line of symmetry and you don't know what to tell. Right? So, x equal to 1, we substitute into any one of the two equations. Now here you are spoiled for choice, you can decide which one you like. I like number one. So I'll put one here, plus three in the left one. Sorry, suppose to be minus one plus uh so that I think it's equal to one minus one. So this would be minus one plus three in the left two. If if you substitute into this one here, minus minus one, you get what? Two. Are you following that? Yes. So our rule now is going to be x, y, okay? This will be translated based on x. Now, the x value, does it indicate that the, the graph is going to move to the left or to the right? If you are moving from positive 2 to minus 1. Is it, is it a translation to the left or right? Huh? Okay, okay, before we carry on, listen. I hope you all know that x refers to horizontal translation. You must know that. Y is what? Vertical translation. Come on, are you following what I'm saying? So, this x value, it was positive 2. Now it's what? Minus 1. Which means the graph was moved 3 units. To the left. And based on transformation, transformation to, to the left is considered as negative. To the right is what? Positive. So when I write the rule here, it will be x minus 3. Okay, let me use the different color. So that will be x minus 3. Okay, look at Okay, look. Initially, x was equal to what? What is 2 minus 3? <laughs> okay, please don't forget that whatever rule you write. It must be able to give you the coordinates, the, the coordinates of the new point. If it can't give you the coordinates of the new point, it means your rule is not correct. Please, this is very basic. Translation to the left is negative. To the right is positive. Up is positive. Down, negative. Okay? You can do it. If you think otherwise, that's your thing. Then why now? Why? The value of y was 3 initially before translation. Right? Now it's what? 2. How do you de de describe that translation? It's 1 unit what? So it means it should be y minus y minus what? 1. Y minus 1. Then let's check if it's correct. 
Initially y was 3, 3 minus 1, which is what? Please remember, whatever rule of, trans of transformation you write, it must be able to give you the original coordinates. Okay? And transformation is always tested in different forms. They might ask you to find the equation, they might ask you to determine the coordinates of a specific point, whichever call a specific graph. So this is for transformation. Right, so let's move on. Okay, I'm done now. And this one here, write down the coordinates of C. If you read the question here, right, the coordinates of C is this point. That's the point, right? So C, okay, here it says points E, F, and C are its, X, in, uh, its intercepts with the coordinates X, C, right? So, so here, how did you find the coordinates of C? Huh? Right? And look here. Point A, you see? Point A is the reflection of C. Point A, this point here, is the reflection of C. Right? Now, if it's a reflection of C, right? The x value changed, isn't it? From minus 4 to what? To 0. Does the y value change? No. So your coordinates here will be x is 0, y is what? That's very simple. Then write down the equation of the axis of symmetry of f. The axis of symmetry of f. What will be the equation of the axis of symmetry of f based on the information? X will be got negative 2, right? How do you get right. If you are to draw the X of symmetry, you use this point here. X is minus 4, X is 0 there. Isn't it? So, what is half the distance from here to there? To be what? To, to be 2 units. So, the value of X here has to be negative what? 2. So, your answer here will be X is equal to minus 2. Are you following that? Yes. Right? Then, the third question, calculate the value of A, P, and Q. Right? Now, this equation here, it was given in turning point form. It was given in turning point form. Therefore, we know that if X is equal to minus 2, what would be the value of P? Is it going to be a positive 2 or negative 2? Huh? The value of P. Your general equation is x minus P all squared. Right? So the value of P, is it going to be negative or is it going to be positive? It's going to be negative. Why? Yes. Okay. Listen carefully. If the general form is like this, the value of P will also be what the value of X along the axis of symmetry. If there was a plus here, then the value of X would be the opposite. Isn't it? Yeah. Be very careful of that. Be very, very careful of that. Because we have a minus here, this P is also equal to minus 2. Are you following that? Hello, hello. Okay, so let's calculate that. So this is 7.3. So we have got f of x equal to a times x. Now p, this will give us positive 2 squared plus q. But Please remember, Q is not the y-intercept. Q is the value of y at the turning point. Okay? So we have got that information. Then, if I want to determine, already I know what P is. Alright? Remember, the question says, calculate the values of A, P, and Q. Isn't that so? A, P, and Q. So we know what P is. 
We now need to determine A, we now need to determine what? Q. Now we need two points now on the graph. Because we have two unknowns. We now have two unknowns. We don't know A, we don't know what? Q. So we need to create two equations and solve them what? Simultaneously. Okay? So we know the coordinates here. We are also given F, isn't it? We are also given this point here. Right? Now remember, this is not a grade 10 equation, so you can't say the value of x here is minus 1. It's not. So, I just want to ask you, among these three points, 1, 2, 3, which two can we use to find A? Find A and what? A. You can use what? A and what? And F. Okay, so let's start with A. So if we substitute A here, Y is 5, X is minus 4. Right? And if I simplify this, I'll get minus 2 squared, which gives me 4A plus Q. So this would be your equation 1. Then, the second equation, I have to use the product of F. So F, X is 0, sorry, Y is 0. Then that would be A. 1 plus 2 squared plus q. So this gives me 0 equal to 9a plus q. So what this means is that q is equal to minus 9a. So that would be the second equation. Alright? 6 marks, please be aware. It's 6 marks. It means there's a lot that you have to do. Right? Please be aware that here our p is equal to minus 2. Right, then from here now, where there is Q there, we put minus 9A, so we end up with 5 equals 4A minus 9A. So this should give us 5 equals minus 5A. Now, common sense should tell you that since the graph has a maximum turning point, the value of A must be what? Negative or positive? It has to be negative. Okay. C, remember x is 0 there. Y is what? 5. So let's see. If I put uh, x equal to 0, and then we put y equal to 5, I think we can also use it. I think we can also use it. Yes? Because there are two, remember we have got two unknowns now. The value of a and the value of what? Of Q. So if you have two unknowns, you need two points on the graph. If there were three unknowns, you need what? Three points. So A will be equal to what? Minus one. Then Q will be equal to minus nine times what? Times minus one. And this will give us Q equal to what? To go to Positive nine. Do you agree with me that the value of Q must be positive, isn't it? Yes. Yes, because this point here, the value of Y there has to be what? Positive. You must use common sense when you're answering questions on functions. You can't get a value which is negative and B for Q. You can't get a value for A which is positive where the graph has a maximum turning point. Are you following? Yeah. Remember, remember, if A is positive, you are going to have a smiley face. If A is negative, you are going to have a sad what? A sad face. Don't forget those concepts. They are very important. So when you answer the personal functions on Friday, remember what I'm telling you now. Use common sense. Ask yourself, does my answer make sense? Okay, so we are done now. We've got all the values. So just to highlight the value, A is there, P is there, then Q is there. All right? And let's turn on. Then, if calculate the x coordinate of D. Now, in M of x is equal to this, calculate the coordinate of D. 
So D is this point. How would you determine the coordinates of, of, of D? Yes, you equate the two ones, they equate them on the two function. Right? So what that means is you say f of x is equal to what? To g of x. What is f of x? Minus x squared minus 4x plus 5 is equal to minus 2x minus 3. So this will give me minus x squared minus 2x plus 8 equal to 3. Then you can use your knowledge of quadratic equations. I'm going to convert the coefficient of x squared to a positive. So I'll factor out minus 1. Or you can divide by minus 1. So this becomes x squared plus 2x minus 8 equal to 0. And then we'll factorize get x plus 4, x minus 2 equal to 0. So we get x equal to minus 4, or x equal to positive 2. Then use common sense now. Which of the two values, x equal to minus 4 and x equal to 2, is applicable at d? Positive 2. Right, so, therefore, x is equal to 2, then you can indicate that this one is not applicable. Then you need to determine the y value. So, your y value is going to be equal to minus 2 times 2 minus 3, and you get minus 7. So, the coordinates of d are going to be x x is 2 y is minus 7 we follow with that right? then the graph of f is reflected about x axis ok so what happens it says write down the coordinates of the turning point of the new parabola so we are reflecting this graph about the x axis Remember, the coordinates of our turning point are x is minus 2, y is what? 9. Do you agree with me there? So if you reflect this, this graph about the x axis, what happens to the turning point? Y changes. Y changes. But x remains the what? The same. So here it says write down the coordinates of the new turning point. So your answer would be minus 2 is what? Minus 9. All right. Then this one here, what are the coordinates of A? Coordinates of A will be what? Remember, this is an, an, an x intercept. So, x will be 1, y will be what? 0. For any logarithmic function. Because this is an x intercept. If if your logarithmic function is like this, what's the value of x of y here? Zero. Okay, let's solve it. Let's solve it. It's a good thing that you are asking. So g of x is equal to a logarithm to base of a pair of x. Y is zero, isn't it? And a. So this would be log the base of the pair of x. Remember, the base of the logarithm is also the base of the exponential. Hello? The base of the logarithm function is also the base of the what? Of the exponential. So our base is the third. If I convert this to exponential form, my base is two what? A third. So this becomes a third to the power of what? Zero. This will be x. Any number is the power of zero is what? One. We get one. Yeah. Okay. Which part? How do you convert? The, uh, the base of the logarithm is also the base of the exponential. So when you move from this step here, this step here becomes the base. The zero on the left hand side becomes the exponent. Okay. Are you following? Okay. Then sketch the graph of the 
inverse of this. Now, remember, I'm, I'm, if I taught you, I think I told you this. You are taught by another teacher, I'm sure your teacher taught you. And if your base of your, of your logarithmic function is between 0 and 1, you get a decreasing function. Which means the original exponential function is also a decreasing what? Function. If the base is more than 1, then you get an increasing function. Are you following what I'm saying? So when you, if you want to sketch the graph of the inverse of this, it's going to be an exponential function. And it will have a, an x, sorry, a y intercept somewhere there. At, at y equal to what? To 1. So when you draw it, they have to intersect somewhere. It goes like this. But it won't touch the what? The x axis. Because the x axis will be an asymptote. Okay? It will be an asymptote. Okay, my sketch is not nice, but well, that's how it's supposed to look. I think I will put it somewhere there so that it goes like that. Okay? Yeah, but you are following what I'm doing. So your sketch for 8.2 should look like that. So that your line of symmetry, the line y equal to x, when you draw it, it will pass through this point of, of intersection. Do you remember that? Yeah, go back to your, to your notes if you forgot. Right? Then the last question says write down the domain of the inverse. The domain of the inverse. So this is the inverse. Remember. The domain of an exponential function is logarithmic. But if you are given the logarithmic function, its, its inverse is the what? An exponential function. So the logarithmic function and the exponential function, they are inverses of each other. For this question, they gave the logarithmic function. What is the inverse of the logarithmic exponential? Are you following that? So, the domain of the exponential, obviously, it's going to be x is an element of real numbers. We are starting from minus infinity all the way up to positive infinity. All right. What? No, you can't. You can't. The domain is going to be x is an element of real numbers. You see, if it was range, that's when you, 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 you talk about the value and the asymptote. You're saying the range. What is the range? So if it was the range here, your answer was going to be, if they were asking for range, it was going to be, y is an element of new numbers, but y is greater than what? C. The, the range of the inverse, which is an exponential function. I'm sure you can see that the graph is above the what? The x-axis. So the values of y are greater than what? Zero. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Keywords that you must look for. Okay? And you must also use common sense. So whenever you see the word maximum, the greatest, the largest, and under rates of change. Okay? It means find the derivative and equate it to what? Is that clear though? There is no need to get confused. So if you read the whole story, you can read but The second paragraph is more important. It says the relationship between the time t from when the water starts flowing and the rate r, which is the water, uh, which the water is flowing through the system is given by this equation. So R is the rate at which the water is flowing in the system. T is the time taken from when it starts flowing. Where T is measured in seconds. So the first question says, after how long? This is time now. After how long? Will the water be flowing at the maximum rate? That means you need to find the derivative. The first the derivative, and then you equate it to what? To zero. All right? So what all we have to do, remember we are answering 
first one there. So R is equal to minus 0, 0,2 T squared plus 10 T. So the first thing we find is the derivative dr over dt is equal to minus 0, 0,4. Okay, 0, 0,2 times 2 is minus 0, 0,4. Minus 0, 0,4 t plus 10. Then, then we take this to 0. So minus 0, 0,4 t plus, plus 10 is equal to 0. Remember, time is never negative. So when you're answering the rates of change, that, that's also important for you to know. Time can never be negative. Right? So this would be minus 0, 0,4 t is equal to minus 10. You divide this, you get t equal to what? 25. Huh? 25. So you're done. It's not complicated. Usually, any question on optimization requires you to find the derivative in the equation for what? You will never get a question on optimization which that doesn't require to find the derivative in the equation for zero. And in most cases, it's one of the first two questions. Okay, or probably the last question if you are dealing with the 2D shape, it will be the last one. Okay? Well, then, I forgot to do the question. But anyway, let me do it for the next page. Then the next question says, after how many seconds does the water stop flowing? Now here, what would be the rate if the water stops flowing? It would be what? Zero. Which means this R here, it would be equal to what? To zero. Okay? So, for 10.2, your R is equal to minus 0, 0,2 T squared plus 10 T. If the rate becomes zero, means that would become zero. What are we supposed to calculate here? The time says how many seconds does the water stop flowing? After how many seconds does it go up? So here, you are now spoiled for choice. I'll tell you why. What type of, a, or what type of an equation is it? It's quadratic. You see that quadratic equation, they also pop up in calculus. That's why you have to be a master of solving quadratic equations. So we need to solve for t. You can use the quadratic formula if you like. You can use take up and for factor, then you can't because of the coefficient of t squared. Okay? You can use factorization. I'm going to use factorization for this to be 0 equal to t times minus 0, 0,2 t plus 10. Are you following there what I just did? I took out a common what? Factor. Then from here you can have t equal to 0 or minus 0, 0,2 t plus 10 is equal to 0. Now, can t be 0? If you use common sense, t cannot be 0. So, minus 0, 0,2 t plus 10 is equal to 0. It's minus 0, 0,2 t equal to minus 10. What is the t equal to? 50 seconds. Right? Also, another way, remember, the rate can be zero, it's going to be zero at a specific point. So you could also use your knowledge of uh, solving the quadratic function or the parabola here. Okay? But this, this is probably the easiest way to do it. So after 10 seconds, the water is going to stop flowing. Okay? Let me be honest with you. Some of the questions on optimization are very easy. Don't be scared because you saw a diagram or maybe you saw some paragraph and then you get scared. No. Don't be. Some of them are so easy. Okay? They are so easy. Alright, let's talk about the cubic function and then we can say goodbye to one another. Alright. So this one now. Question here, we're given the equation of the cubic function. 
the coefficient of x cubed is a what? It's a 1. So the value of a here that does not determine the shape. It's like the b value in the general form. Remember, the general form is f of x equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So the meaning of this a in the general equation is different from the a in the given equation. Is that clear then? Remember, these are just letters that are used for the coefficient. You can have any other letter. So don't be confused that the A here determines the shape. No way. Alright, so here, you're supposed to show that A got 1, B got minus 1. If you get a question asking you to show, you are not supposed to use what you are, what you are given to show. You understand that? So don't use this value here. Use the graph and the given information. Since we have two unknowns there, we need to create two equations. And we're only given one point on the graph. Okay? What this means is we may need the first derivative. Okay? So this point P here, it says P and R are the turning points. What is the value of the gradient at P? Zero. So, write our equation that we are given is f of x equal to x cubed plus ax squared plus bx minus 2. Okay, so the y-intercept here is equal to what? Negative 2. I hope you know that you can determine the y-intercept of a cubic function from the equation. The value of d is the y-intercept. So it's negative what? 2. Are you following that? So let's substitute this point P into the function. So put one there, put one square, we put A that will be one square, we put B that will be one minus two. We put one equal to one plus A plus B minus two. Okay, so I take that this one will be minus one, so I will have two equal to A plus B. So that will be my first equation. Are you following that? We have two unknowns. Therefore, we have to create two equations. The second equation, you have to use your knowledge of the first derivative. Because point P is also the turning point. And what's the gradient at P? What is the gradient at P? It's zero. So, f prime of x of this it will be equal to 3x squared plus 2ax plus b. That's a line. Oh, okay, sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. instead of the negative. Alright, allow me to just correct that. Thank you for telling me to fix that. Okay, sorry. I substitute positive value instead of negative value. So let me fix that. That in a few seconds to fix that. How many of you saw that I substituted the code in the middle of the video? If you have trouble with me, you need it. So this was supposed to be minus 1 equal to, what's the only kind of the rational So a and minus 1 squared plus, plus b and minus 1 and minus 2. That will be minus 1, that will be minus 1, plus, plus a, that will be minus b, minus 2. So minus 1 to minus 3, we now now get b minus 3. Now it's correct. Right? Okay. Right. Then the second equation will define the second derivative. So f prime of x will be equal to 3x squared. Plus 2ax plus b. Then we have to substitute now the value of the gradient at the turning point is what? Zero. What is the value of x at the turning point? Minus 1. So this will be 3 times minus 1 squared plus 2 times 2 times a and minus 1 plus b. So we get 0 equal to. 
then that one will give me minus 2a plus b. Well, let me write this equation finally. A is b, okay, b minus 2a is equal to what? So that's my second equation. Okay, now I'm in grade 10 now. You know that uh, simultaneous what? Patience. Great ten. So what? Yeah, let's check it if it's taking care of two. So if I if I make A the subject here, let me make B the subject here. So B is gonna be equal to, to A minus two. And then I'll just substitute it there. Okay? So what that means is I'm gonna get that every a minus 2 minus 2a is equal to 3. So we get, this is a by the way, so that will be minus a equal to, I'm getting minus that, so we get a equal to minus 5. What answer are you getting? Yeah. Huh? What answer are you getting? Yeah. Two. Two. Okay, right. Let's see what the problem is. Okay, can, can someone tell me, did you get these two equations? No. You got the two equations? No. Alright. Okay, which equation? Did, which, what was the second equation? I took that B with the A, and then I got the. Yeah, then I. Uh, uh, okay, Jan, I think you need to look at your um, your equations. Okay, let's just do this quickly. Is this correct? The second equation. I made B the subject. Yeah. I got B, B equal to A minus 2. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. It's wrong. Wait. Oh, we have a Okay, let's check it. Uh, so what I did here is I swapped these two b minus two a. Okay, this is supposed to be minus a. Okay, you are right. So this is one. It was minus two a. So okay, I need to fix this. This is blah blah blah. Forget about that. Okay, can I have your attention, please? If you make b, then if you if you want to simplify this equation, I you have to take this 3 to the left, isn't it? Huh? Yes. It becomes negative 3. Then you swap the position of the minus 2a and the positive b. You get b minus 2a. Are you following that? So you should get b minus 2a plus negative 3. So let's fix that. So I was supposed to have a minus 2 minus 2a is equal to minus 3. So I'll get minus a minus 2 equal to minus 3. Yes, minus a equal to minus 3. So a is going to be 1. A is 1. Okay, this is correct now because I made a mistake of not putting the minus. Okay? Then what is b? b is going to be equal to 1 minus what? 2. Then you get minus 1. Remember, don't forget that we are we are already told what the value of a is and what the value of b is. Do you remember that? We are told here a is one, which is what I got. There. Right? B is minus one, which is what I got. There. Please don't forget that the values of a and b are given, but you are, you are supposed to show that they are really like this: a is one, b is what? Minus one. Yes. If you don't, if you can't get a equal to one, and b equal to minus one, then you're working out the same point. Okay. 
Why the value of the derivative is minus one? It's a zero. Because at P, we have a turning point. But when you substitute here now, that's when you put what? Minus one. Because point P is also along the cubic function. Do you understand the difference there? The moment you find the first derivative, you can't put f prime of x as minus one, it's zero for this question at P. Okay. Right. But the other thing as well, whilst we're still on this, I don't have time to go over everything, but make sure you know your general equation of, uh, of uh, you know, the turning point form of a cubic function. f of x equal to a times x minus x1 times, times x minus x2 times, yeah, you need that equation as well if they ask you for to find the, to find the equation. Also, your concavity. Your concave it as well. Remember, concave down, concave up, those questions. 